What's up guys, it's Josh from Kipiteki, where we dive into the world of Linux and help you gear up your tech savvy future. And in today's tutorial, we're exploring Oracle, which is a powerful command line tool for managing cloud storage. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting in tech, this guide on Ubuntu 22.04 will get you up and running with Oracle in no time. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm at oraclone.org, and this is where you can get all the information about Oracle. And of course, I'll have the link down in the description of the video, but I want to cover what Oraclone is and why it's a game changer for cloud storage management. Now, Oraclone supports various cloud storage providers, and I'll show you guys that in a second, but it offers a lot of features like file syncing, transferring, and encryption. And in my opinion, it's a must have tool for anyone working with cloud data. So let me scroll down a little bit so you guys can see all the clouds that are supported. You got one feature, Alchemy, Net Storage, Alibaba, Amazon, S3. You got DigitalOcean, Spaces, Dropbox, Google Drive, FTP. You can you know connect to your own FTP server if you have one locally in your home lab. You can also use SSH or SFTP which allow you to connect to a Linux server you have somewhere in the cloud. If you don't want to store it on one of these cloud platforms, Google Photos is available to you as well. So like if you have local photos that you take and you want to get those synced up to your Google Photos, that's a dope way of actually doing it. Dropbox, Linkbox, Mega, Memory, even Microsoft OneDrive is available to you through this application. And if you look to the right, you'll see it says Home and then Config. And if you click home, that'll take you to the page for that cloud platform. So if we click here, I just open up the tab, but as you can see, that's one feature. I'm not sure about this application. I never used it. I never used this cloud storage before, but it'll take you to the website for it. And then also it'll, if you click on the next one, right next to it, it says config. So that'll take you to the specific directions on configuring one feature using or clone on your system. And that's available for each one of the cloud providers that you want to check out and today i'll be using google drive as the one we'll configure i'll show you guys how to set it up on your bunch 22.04 and so this walks you through the full process after getting it installed the configuration of it and then i'll show you guys how to auto mount the drive and all that good stuff once we get it fully configured so let's go back to the home page and one thing i want to show you guys is the github page because it's a little bit more information over there well it's pretty much the same but i just want to show you guys this that is actively being worked on so this application they're constantly maintaining it as you can see i believe they just released version 1.65.2 last week and as you can see it's a whole bunch of people that have stored this project watching this project as well as like 4k forks so this is a very active project that's still being developed on it's a lot of people contributing to the project as well and just show you guys the languages it's mostly written in the go language so there you go it's 98.1 percent in go uh, a little bit of html shell python javascript and make files but go is the dominant programming language used in here and basically gives you all the information that we had on the website you can go to each one of the configs it'll open up the configs and walk you through the process of actually getting it set up so if you want to set it up up on a specific cloud platform that have those configurations for you and then also i wanted to go down because it talks about the features so md5 sha1 hashes checked at all times for file integrity timestamp preserve on files partial sync supported on a whole file basis copy mode sync mode by sync mode so two-way syncs check mode to check for file hash equality can sync to and from network to different cloud accounts optional large file chunking optional transparent compression it's a whole lot of features i won't go through them all but the documentation is well documented all you have to do is go through and check out the documentation you can get any information you need on how to actually use cloud or cloud on your linux distribution all right so let's hop over to my virtual machine so i can walk you guys through the quick install and then i'll walk you through the configuration and we can check out our clone let's get to it all right so i'm logged into my virtual machine and this is zubuntu 
And the installation is super simple. It's included in the main repository. I'm not sure if it has the most up-to-date version. I don't believe it does, but we'll check it out in a second. But it is included in Ubuntu's main repository. So any of the Ubuntu-based distros, you should be able to install it directly using the apt package manager or app dash git. And so the first thing you want to do before you install anything is update the system. So let's run sudo apps updates. And I'm sure this system is up to date because I just updated before starting the recording of this video. Yeah, as you can see, all packages are update. And I also want to show you guys another option right fast. So uh, I know snaps are being talked about a lot in the community, but you can install it using snap. So they do have a snap package out there for you. So you can type sudo snap install and then or clone. But I'm gonna install it directly from the main repository, which it really doesn't matter. They both work fine it's just the snaps you know it's that snap version then you got your regular version that you can install on the system and actually since i already got the command i'll, I'll go down and install it using snap like i said it doesn't matter so let's go down and press enter it should ask well it's not going to access for our password because it, we just ran the sudo apt update up there at the top but we're going on and install it from the snaps and let's give it a second to complete all right so the installation is complete and like i said earlier when we were looking at the documentation you have to configure or clone after this and let's go back over to the website right fast and like i said you want to check out the for what cloud provider you want to use so like i said we're going to use google drive and don't get confused they have a google cloud storage but google drive you know is what typically most people have and if they want to store some things in the cloud they're probably going to use their google drive account so if you click here that'll take you to that configuration for it and the main command all you have to do is run or clone config and it'll step you through the process so let's hop back over to our virtual machine and walk through that process right fast so like i said it's or clone and then also one other thing i wanted to point out it does have the most up-to-date version in the snap so the 165.2 that is the most up-to-date version but anyway or clone and then come and press enter and like i said this will walk you through the full process it's very simple to do and the first option is setting up a remote location or a remote drive essentially and since this is our first time running it'll say no remotes found so do you want to make a new one and most likely that's what you want to do this especially if this is your first time installing it so you just type in press enter and then now you want to enter a name for your remote location. So you can name it whatever the provider is. I'm going to just name it G Drive. You can name it whatever you want to. I'm going to just name it based on that. And then now you want to select your storage. So if we scroll up, it gives you a whole bunch of options. Basically, all those options that we talked about in the it breaks them out for you so you can go through them. So that one feature, Alchemy, Amazon Drive, you know, all that good stuff there. And like I said, we're looking for the Google Drive and make sure you don't select the wrong one. This is, and you'll see it's different colors. They make it different colors so you don't get confused. But 17 is that Google Cloud Storage, but we want to do 18, which is Google Drive. So 18, and then like I said, select whichever one you want and they alternate the color so that was 18 so if we go down here to the bottom it's basically asking what storage or what type of cloud provider you want to connect to that's essentially what it is so all you have to do is type in that number and it looks like my numlock is messed up so there we go so 18 press enter and then right here is this is all optional i'll just leave it blank uh, you don't want to really mess with this this is typically optional it says google application client id just ignore that step all you have to do is press enter and i'll skip that port and then also the client secret key just leave that empty especially if this is just your first time setting it up so let's press enter now you have a couple options here you have five options you can give it full access to your drive read access only to your drive three is access to the files only created by or clone so whatever you create in your local directory that'll get synced up and then when you look at it you'll only see those files up there and not all the files that are previously in your drive you don't want our clone to have access to those files but it'll only have access to the files that you use on or clone and this is for or clone only you still have access to it from your google drive so if you go directly to your google drive login you'll see the the files for both you'll see the files that you added directly to google drive and then also the ones that you added via or clone and then number four is allow read and write access to the application data folder this is not visible on the drive website i've never used that before so i don't even know what that is but it's basically a 
hidden folder that's up there that you can use. Also allow read access to file metadata, but does not allow any access to read or download file content. And you just make the selection based on what you need. I'm gonna just give it full access just to show you guys everything. So let's hit one and press enter and it'll allow us to set it up. So service account file, this is optional as well. And this is only needed if you want to use SA, SA instead of interactive login, which I want to use. I want to use that interactive login. So let's press enter there. And then right here, this is editing the advanced config. I'm not going to edit the advanced config. Let's just type in and press enter in as the default. Let's uh, just go there. And now it says use web browser to automatically authenticate or clone with remote, you know, cloud provider. And all you have to do is type Y for yes. I recommend you do that. This will open up a browser and allow you to log into your Google Drive and then give or clone access to it. It'll generate keys and all that good stuff. So let's go down and press enter there and it should automatically open it up. If it doesn't, it gives you a link to actually open it up. As you can see, this is the link. So following this link, this will open it up. I, I believe this is my first time opening up the browser. That might be why it's taking a while, but if it doesn't open up, all you have to do is hit control or hold control and it'll and click this link and you can open it up and or to your Google account. And so it looks like we are having a issue it may have something to do with like i said this is my first time opening up anything on here uh, using a browser so there we go so i just clicked on it and it opened it up and this will allow you to log into your account your google account so all you got to do is type in your account information i'm gonna log into my keep it techie accounts press enter and then type in my password for it and then press next there and this will allow us to log into our account let's see don't save now it's saying the or clone wants to access your google account and essentially what you're doing is giving it access to see edit create and delete all of your Google Drive file. So all you gotta do is type allow, and this is all personal preference. If you don't wanna give this access to your Google Drive, then don't. But if you do and you wanna use this, you know, convenient little tool, then you'll go down and do it. So I'm gonna just go down and do it, just show you guys. I'll just hit allow. And I don't know if you guys seen in the background, but it was waiting for us to authenticate and give it permissions and once it gave us permissions it basically just spits out basically saying success all done you can go back to or clone in your terminal so let's close that as you can see it got our codes and then the next thing is configure this as a team share this is only if you're let's say you're working as a developer and you want to share files within this drive with other people then you can configure it that way to where it's a share drive which i'm not going to do that i'm gonna just type in which is the default press enter. And then also it'll spit out the configuration information, configuration complete, option type drive. Here's their access token. Uh, you don't wanna share this with anyone. I'm deleting this after this, you know what I'm saying? So by the time this video is up, these keys are be destroyed and all our access to or clone will be removed from my account. So you guys can't copy this down and try to connect to it. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff will be gone, but I just want to at least show you guys, you know, the full process process and what it'll actually spit out in the configure after you complete the configuration and then right here actually another option keep this g drive remote and the default is yes i'm gonna select yes but you can edit this remote or delete this remote so i'm gonna press y press enter and then right here this gives you the current remotes and all we have to do now is close out the configuration by typing Q. But you do have options to add more remotes while you're, you know, running this script. It'll, you know, basically take you through the process if you want to add another drive somewhere. But we're done, so I'm just going to type Q, press enter, that'll close it out. All right, so let me show you guys how to mount this drive to your local system. And what you want to do is create a folder somewhere. You can create it wherever you want to, as long as you have access to it. What I'm gonna do is, let's clear, but what I'm gonna do is create it in my home directory. As you can see, I already have, you know, directories in here, desktop, downloads, whatever. But you can go down and create a directory under here. So the command is make dir. So you make a directory and it's gonna make it in this location because we're in the home directory. So you don't have to specify anything. You can just type in what you wanna, you know, name the folder. So I'm gonna just name it G drive, which is basically the same as what I use to create the actual drive that we're gonna be connecting to or the configuration for that drive. So I'm gonna just name it G drive, but make directory G drive, press enter. We gotta list this directory again. You'll see 
G drive in there now. So that's where we want to mount our Google drive. So all we have to do is type or clone and then mount and then our drive, which is G drive and colon and then our location and we have to specify that location i'm gonna just put the tilde which is a representation of the home directory and then a forward slash and then that directory that we're we want to connect to so g drive and we can take that backslash off and that'll mount that drive to this location that's essentially all we have to type and press enter and that should mount that drive location to that location on our system and it'll take a little time or it should be connected hold on let's see because it won't close out it'll just kind of sit there but as you can see i'm gonna make it kind of big so you guys can kind of see this but you'll see g drive here is kind of small let's see if we can zoom in a little bit and we can't zoom in right there but this is our g drive right there and you can go to it either way you can just click on the drive here that open up that drive and as you see it already synced down some of my stuff that i already have on that drive and then also like i said if you go back into your home directory that is that location so it's basically mounted in that location which is super cool and it also tells you you know how big it is this virtual machine i believe only has 32 gigabytes of space but as you can see free space is like a terabyte because i have a terabyte associated with this g drive which i don't have much up there but when and i kind of cleared out certain stuff i'm gonna move stuff back up there uh, i kind of cleared out certain stuff for this video that i didn't want to show in this video and then i'll just bring it back but anyway that's essentially it and just show you guys right fast so i'm gonna just cut this we're gonna cut it and then i'm gonna drop that into my documents so we we're gonna move it out of our g drive so as you can see it's gone and then also if we open up our browser right fast let's go back to our web browser right and then let's just go to what is it drive google.com log into my drive it should automatically pu pull it up but as you can see that well you probably can't tell but that file is actually gone from up here and as you can see it's more drives there i mean more files there i have like video up there and i think some of that stuff hasn't synced down or maybe it's tied to another account i can't remember for sure let's go to my drive right fast yeah so you'll see only the files that i have in my drive the home shows like other stuff i don't know if you guys know that but it'll show under home files that you have access to under other drives that are available to you so someone else can share a drive with you and you can see those files as well under home anyway this is those files as you can see that one file is gone we got one two three four directories and two files and if we go back to our directory you'll see it's the exact same and if we go back to our documents let's say we want to put this back so we can cut it and then let's go back to our home directory go under g drive and let's paste that in there boom wait wait a couple seconds and then we may have to refresh over here as you can see it's kind of it's kind of pushing it up to our drive yeah and it automatically updated because it's a small file so you know that lets you know that you can sync back and forth all you have to do is add files to that directory which is super cool all right now so as you can see the only reason we're connecting to it or it's the only reason we have a connection to it is because this command is running well let me show you guys how to auto mount this so you don't have to run this command every time you want to connect to it so if we hit Control c that'll actually stop our connection as you can see it kind of disappeared so what you want to do is grab this command i'm gonna just grab this command and then also let's just open up i believe uh mouse pad is on here so let's open up our text editor whichever one we want i'm gonna paste that in there so we'll have it and then let's clean up let's close out the drive and let's leave that up that's fine and we can we can leave that there as well but if we go under here and we go to stored up one thing on ubuntu systems they do have uh, sessions and stored ups but you can go in here and add custom commands and i'll show you guys this it's basically adding a application to auto store you can select cert select certain things that are already there or you can create something so all we want to do is create some so we get this plus add application we can go in here and name it let's just name this uh, g drive so G drive, and then we could name it mounts. And then we could put a description in here. Let's just put auto mounts drive or G drive. Let's put G drive in front of it. So we'll know exactly what we're talking about. So auto mount G drive. And then what you wanna do is grab this command and we wanna run this as a shell script. So we could drop this in there, put it in quotes, 
and you gotta go back to the front of it put it in quotes and then we can run you know sha and then dash c and then you want to put a space in there and then you have options for the trigger we're obviously going to select one login so each time we log into the system it'll automatically mount that drive to that location that we specified in this command but there are other triggers on logout which doesn't make sense on shutdown that doesn't make sense on restore it, suspend hibernate you know all that good stuff but the only one that makes sense is on log on we basically want this to mount each time we log into the system so all we have to do is press ok and we scroll down we'll see it added down here it's on login g drive mounts auto mount g drive let's go ahead and close that and then we can close this we'll need to save the command and let's actually close everything out and reboot the system and i'll be back when it all right so i'm logged back in after the reboot if we go to home and click on g drive you'll see we are automatically connected to that drive so that's how you automatically connect to it you know so each time you log into the system you know it'll have this connected you know from here to tell you you know turn this off or remove it from the store all right and so there you have it folks you're now equipped to harness the power of or clone on ubuntu 22.04 and i hope this tutorial helps you manage your cloud storage like a pro and if you found this guide helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to keep it techie for more linux insight and tech tips until next time keep learning and of course keep it techie